Then the planes, the planes are, you have the sagittal plane, sagittal plane which divide the body into two lateral halves. You know, these are the two lateral halves, the right lateral and the left lateral. If you divide by the coronal plane, that, then you may not get the lateral halves. Then you may get anterior and posterior, anterior front and posterior, but you do not get the lateral halves, okay? And then the transverse. Transverse is perpendicular to the longitudinal plane. So there are two longitudinal planes, sagittal and coronal. Coronal can also be called frontal and sagittal can also be called medial. Sagittal can be called medial and coronal can be called frontal. So far all points are done. Done, done, done. <coughs> Good. Video is not clear. Bhaiya, bhaiya, hello. Video not clear. Okay, now, Bacho, <clears throat> I will explain you the proximal and distal. So, let me explain you proximal and distal. The word proximal stands for nearer and distal for farther, distance, farther. D for distance, D for distal, farther and proximal, near, near, proximal. Now, near to what or distal or distance from what? Now from the center of the body, from the center of the body, if the thing is nearer to the center, we can say it is proximal and if it is away from the center, we can call it distal. Now just a sketch I have drawn here and uh, this is my midline, my midline, okay. And uh, for the limbs, we can say proximal and distal on the point of attachment. You know that this, this is the point of attachment of the upper limb, point of attachment of the lower limbs. So anything close to the point of attachment is called proximal. Away from the point of attachment is called distal. For example, I can say that my elbow joint is proximal to my wrist joint. I write E for elbow and W for wrist, okay? This is my shoulder joint. My elbow joint is proximal to my wrist joint. Simple, got it, simple. So similarly, my knee joint is dashed to my ankle joint. My knee joint is dashed to my ankle joint, come on. My knee joint is dashed to my ankle joint. Yes, you got it, you got it proximal, you got it. My knee joint is proximal to my ankle joint. Very good. Acha. The same thing can change. For example, I can say that my ankle joint, my ankle joint is distal to my knee joint and my knee joint is distal to my hip joint. My knee joint is distal to my hip but proximal to my ankle. Distal to my, because distance away, away from the hip, but nearer to the, as compared to the A. So depending upon the reference, we have to say proximal and distal. You might have heard this word proximal convoluted tubule, isn't it? We all have heard this word proximal convoluted tubule. Regarding what we have heard, can you tell me? <clears throat> I know that you guys are smarter, so you must have heard this word proximal convoluted tubule distal convoluted tubule have you heard if you have heard we can proceed further or else that the chapter comes then we will discuss these terms okay i am trying to draw the structure for your reference for your hint now tell me what is this structure that you see yes you are right it is nephron it is nephron good it is nephron now here the the point of reference is the uh, Bowman's capsule, this part. This is called the point of reference or the point of attachment. The point of attachment, point of reference. So anything close to the point of attachment because it is a tubule. Anything close to the point of attachment is proximal and away is distal. Or similarly, there are two convoluted tubules. Convo, convoluted, convoluted tubules. The part of the tubule which is highly coiled convoluted this is also convoluted and convoluted tubule 
beta please understand that in anatomy we don't have same name for the two structures hmm? we cannot have same name otherwise because we have to refer and uh, when we are referring unless we have different name how can we refer for example and it is a right example real example now in my class you know when i was in school in my class there are two vishal sharma two vishal sharma now in roll call which vishal they are talking if one is notorious and one is simple who is uh, getting the beating who like you know this is a problem for example they ask okay this is the answer key of uh, vishal sharma now which vishal should come then they call they call the parent school authorities call the parents and the initial of their father is being kept for example in my own class so then my that one of the vishal sharma became vishal j sharma and vishal n sharma j sharma nare j for jagdish and n for naresh that is respectively their parents the father's name right so because we have to put something unless how we, how we refer same problem could have happened in our body if we have the same name for the two structures so therefore we have to put something prefix suffix something to make them different here we have made proximal and distal proximal and distal i hope you have understood and whenever this term will come again you will understand it more so here i will keep it as proximal but so this is proximal proximal because it is close to the point of attachment and this one is the distal which is farther from the point of attachment because otherwise the names could be same while i have discussed with you all these points you know superior inferior the last point is left and that is superficial superficial and deep lastly we have superficial and deep superficial means yes yes superficial means close to the surface close to the surface deep means inside you know the closer is superficial and inside deeper deep superficial deep superficial deep the superior is above inferior is below superior inferior superficial deep superficial okay so where is the pain sir pain is near the surface superficial pain no no sir pain is not in the surface pain is deep inside my joint deep pain right deep pain okay then we can write tenderness tenderness means the moment you touch something and the pain begins superficial tenderness then if the touching won't create any pain but deep pressure can cause pain pain on deep pressure deep superficial deep very simple superficial towards the surface surface so this superficial is nearer to the surface surface okay but so i hope i have discussed with you all these terms and if any term is left then we can you know it will be coming uh, whenever we are using them i want you to just uh, do this exercise let me check if i am having that exercise with me and uh, i have saved by the name of gift yeah gift okay let's do these questions and uh, i hope 90% correctness the way i can see you guys the way you are catching the things okay so which statement is correct now just now we discussed this example so you can easily do that come on so which one is the correct one the hip is proximal to the knee the knee is proximal to the hip the shoulder is distal to the elbow the knee is distal to the ankle come on which one is correct very good very good no no try 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 if your answer is coming as a c and d think again if your answer is coming as a or c or d think again because to me the answer is b because 
it means the hip is proximal to the knee you know proximal proximal pass pass proximal proximal okay so you know that hip the it is a point of attachment only the knee is away so you know there is a thigh in between so once again once again uh, the just see all these options and i'll take you to the board and here goes right it says that hip is proximal to the knee correct the hip is proximal to the knee because it is nearer nearer to the center of the body and or nearer to the point of attachment right and the other options are going wrong see the other options the knee is proximal to the hip wrong it is distal then the shoulder is distal to the elbow no opposite elbow is distal to the shoulder bachcho elbow is distal to the shoulder elbow elbow is away and this is shoulder elbow is distal to the shoulder isn't it isn't it this is wrong and similarly some some of you have given the answer even faster than me amazing and similarly the knee is distal to the ankle no the ankle is distal to the knee okay bachcho let's do this question that transverse plane divides the body into the transverse plane of we are saying body and if not mentioned that means you can say the human body you can refer here as the human body the transverse plane i am writing here it's a human human body come on ha ji bachcho the transverse plane divides the human body into dash and dash portions choose the most correct answer with respect to terminology used for humans okay already given humans and here the answer is posterior anterior proximal distal medial lateral and superior and inferior come on answer and you got it right this one is most of the people have given it correctly up and down superior and inferior if you cut transversely you will get superior and inferior if you cut transversely you will get superior and inferior well bachcho let's move further and here goes the term that denotes away from the midline question number 3 i hope you all are seeing this question question number 3 the term the term that denotes away from the midline of the body is away from the midline 1 2 3 4 and the correct answer is 1 very good it means away from the midline is lateral and towards the midline is medial 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 and lateral medial and lateral very good let's do this question choose the odd one with respect to the embryos of celian traits now i think this you may, you may not be knowing okay which statement is correct with respect to terminology used in human anatomy the uh, the ear is medial to the eye now you have to say the correct one okay find the correct one the statement is correct whenever you find such question correct incorrect please underline first whenever you have a paper pencil with you please underline always or circle that what we have to answer now in this one correct sometime we know the answer but we are trapped because we couldn't read correct or incorrect okay so now you see the ear is medial to the eye the chin is anterior to the nose the elbow is proximal to the shoulder and the wrist is distal to the elbow ha ji bachcho what is the correct answer and the correct uh, one person please write one only theek okay? hai because see there is a small window only and i am i am seeing your answer from that small window only right and the correct answer is c correct answer is c so here also children are there and here also children are there i am looking in front i am looking into camera okay so don't think that i am not looking at you i want to look at you so therefore i am looking in the camera okay bachcho so the correct answer here is d and now let's do the sixth one the coronal plane divides the body into dash and dash portions now this is good coronal plane corona corona means crown corona means crown and just imagine how do we do we put the crown crown we put the crown okay corona corona means crown yes please coronal plane coronal 
if you divide, if you cut through the coronal plane, you get left, right, posterior, anterior, medial, proximal, and cranial and caudal. Okay, I'll explain this cranial caudal to you, but first, the answer is not C. So let me uh, tell you A, B, and C answer. And the correct answer is yes, but correct answer is posterior and anterior. Very good. Posterior means the rear and anterior means the front. Very good. You have seen another term here, caudal and cranial. The cranium means the brain box. The cranium is the brain box. Caudal means tail. Corda means tail and cranium means brain box. So brain. Hmm? So cranial is towards the head side. Towards the head side is cranial. Now, if the body is erect, for example, in this picture, <coughs> when the body is erect, right? So where is the head? This is the head side. And when we are going like this, this is the cranial end. This is the cranial end, cranial end. Now, don't expect a tail should be present. No, but towards that end, so cranial end, and this end is called the caudal end, caudal end, cranial end, caudal end, cranial end, caudal end. Towards the head is the cranial end, and towards the tail is the caudal end. But so. Cranial, cranial refer to the head region, head, the brain box is cranium and coda refers to the tail. Coda refers to the tail, cranial refers to the head. Also write the literal meaning of cranium. Also write the literal meaning of cranium for our body. I am writing here cranium. Cranium, what is cranium? Cranium means the brain box. The brain box. Cranium means the brain box. Brain box. Cranium. It is made up of eight bones. It is used to protect the brain. Cranium. Here we can also refer to it as, it as head. The head side in the corda is the tail side. We have some example where we have this cranial and caudal. Let me proceed further. Because you guys are picking fastly, so I should not be worrying about, I can move further. The plane that separates the body into right and left equal halves. The plane that separates the body into right and left equal halves. Now, this is tricky. Yeah, I know you can answer, most of you can answer. Yes, equal, when we want equal halves, equal. And this is the mid-sagittal. But to the mid-sagittal, mid-sagittal, anything which is away from the mid is the para. Para means by the side, para, mid-sagittal. Mid-sagittal can divide the body into the two equal mirror images. Two equal mirror images, mid-sagittal. Yesterday we discussed about the mid-sagittal and the para-sagittal. Okay, but so then the plane that runs from the top to bottom, the plane that runs from top to bottom vertical, dividing our body into unequal left and right parts, top to bottom, dividing our body into unequal left and right parts is known as, very good, that plane that is running from top to bottom, that means top to bottom, longitudinal, number one. Number two, it says that it is giving the two halves which are not equal, which are unequal, unequal. Come on, the answer. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes. But only one. One person will write only one. Very good. Very good. And the correct answer is parasagital. Parasagital. Very good. Okay. Now, you just see this one. Just see this one. Parasagital. And the mid-sagital into equal. Right and left. And this parasitical into, into unequal. Okay, now just a reference I can give here so that for some of you who have joined today, they might be having a problem, little problem regarding para and mid sagittal. So we have the mid mid sagittal and para sagittal. Mid sagittal and para sagittal. Okay, so here goes 
देखो बेटा वेरी गुड कलर इमेज वी हैव कलर इमेज नाउ देर इज अ रेड कलर प्लेन रेड कलर प्लेन नाउ विच इज डिवाइडिंग यू कैन सी इट इज पासिंग थ्रू द मिड ऑफ द हेड एंड इवन द मिड ऑफ द नोज द रेड कलर प्लेन द रेड कलर वन इज डिवाइडिंग द बॉडी इन टू टू इक्वल मिरर इमेजेस वेर एज द येलो कलर इज ऑल्सो गिविंग राइट एंड लेफ्ट because this is the right lateral that is the left lateral this is the right lateral that is the left lateral okay so the yellow is also the sagittal one only both are sagittal both are sagittal so one of them is para sagittal and one of them is mid sagittal one of them is mid sagittal mid sagittal and one of them is para sagittal mid sagittal and one of them is para para sagittal para sagittal mid sagittal and para sagittal come on now tell me which color is para sagittal identify the yes please some people have already written the answer i want everyone to write please everyone write in your chat box if you write you learn <clears throat> it is a commitment it is a commitment that you are learning yes please the para sagittal yes so the red one is mid sagittal and the para means away from the mid you know by the side para means by the side para and the yellow one is para sagittal and the red one is mid sagittal mid sagittal so you know that if you cut through this plane you will get two unequal sides the right side is a bigger one than the left one and i hope you understand so this answers our next question which we have just now discussed a plane a plane that runs from top to bottom vertical dividing our body into unequal left and right parts is known as answer is c para sagittal now the brain is dashed to the spinal cord now yes i want to check you the brain is dashed to the spinal cord superficial medial superior and inferior come on the brain is dashed to the spinal cord sometime it is not easy for me to imagine that you guys are really answering from your brain but yes as i can see all other you know, subjects you are doing very great that means you are picking the biology also great and yes that is the correct answer bachcho superior superior right so if you see the brain if you see the brain and the spinal cord okay so this is upside superior and this is inferior superior inferior right so correct answer is superior and here goes the third one next one let us see next one we have six more to go the following are the animal with only two embryonic germ layers you can leave this one the body symmetry of the human being i think the first question which i asked yesterday those who have joined only today for them also let us try your answer question number 11 the body symmetry of the human being is what symmetry we have radial biradial spherical or bilateral and the correct answer is bilateral our body symmetry is bilateral bilateral because the mid sagittal the mid sagittal the mid sagittal plane divides us into right and left into right and left lateral halves right and left lateral halves right lateral and left lateral so we get two lateral right and left how many lateral two lateral therefore what we can call it bilateral by means two bilateral by means two the phylum with bilateral symmetry is now i tell you what these animals are these are the sponges these are the sponges <clears throat> sponges and these are the jellyfish the jellyfish <clears throat> the comb jellies uh, tinophora is comb comb jellies comb jellies commonly called and platyhelminths are the flat worms the flat worms flat worms porifera sponges nidaria nidaria see silent nidaria jellyfish tinophora 
comb jellies, platyhelminths, flat worms. Come on. Yes, but bilateral symmetry and correct answer is platyhelminths. I can give one disclaimer here. Those who have not able to understand this one, don't worry about because I think some of you have already done these names and some of you have problem. Okay. So uh, these names and the phylum and how the animal looks like. Once we do this topic, so I have plenty of images to support the literature, the text. So don't worry, those who can do the correct answer is platyhelminths. The type of symmetry the Nidarians have and Tinophora have is the radial symmetry, radial, and the type of symmetry the Porifera, the sponges have, and that is they are asymmetric. They are asymmetric. Okay. So asymmetric porifera, most of them don't have a symmetry. Nidaria and Tinophora, they have radial symmetry. And platyhelminths onwards, they have flat. These are they have the bilateral symmetry. Bilateral. Okay, the correct answer for this, because we have asked bilateral, the correct answer is platyhelminths. Okay, so I'm giving you disclaimer. Don't worry if you have not understood this question very well. Don't worry. Organ level of organization is present in. Uh, we'll do this triploblastic animal with pentamerous radial symmetry. Now, this question also, pentamerous. Yesterday, someone was asking me, pentamerous symmetry, pentamerous. Which plane is this? Come on, which plane is this? Sagittal transverse coronal paramedian. Yes, please. This one is transverse. This one is transverse. Very good. This is a transverse plane because it is perpendicular to the longitudinal plane. This is a long longitudinal plane because this is parallel to the long axis. These are the longitudinal planes. Okay. And this one is perpendicular to that and therefore we can call it as transverse. Transverse plane. Very good. This planes and all will help you to understand the animals very well and easily. And with this, we come to the end of this part, which is the play inside, anatomical position and all. And Bacho, I hope you have understood. Uh, again, I am referring to dorsal and ventral. Ventral is the front side, the belly side, and dorsal is the back side. Dorsal is the back side and uh, ventral is the belly side. Because this will be used many a times in this topic. We are doing the kingdom animalia. Kingdom, it's a big kingdom. Kingdom animalia. Now, why I'm calling them animalia? Why not simply animals I have kept? Why I'm, uh, sir, can transfer plane be drawn at any part that only through the midline or no, 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 any part. Transverse, 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 any part. All are transverse. Good question. Good question. All are transverse. Any part. Good. Good question. Okay. Now, why I'm calling it animalia? Why not animal? See, this is Latinization. This is Latinization. Latinization. Okay. So, we are Latinizing the names to make them scientific names. Scientific names. This is called Latinization. The guy who started it for the very first time, his name was Carl von Linn. Carl von Linn. His name was Carl von Linn. Now, this is the first person who has given the system of naming, system of naming or system of nomenclature. Okay. And uh, see, he said that the organisms should be given two names. Two names, right? For example, let me just give me any example. Shall I start with the human beings? Human beings or man? Cat, okay? So, cat is called Felis. Felis. Dog. Canis. Okay? Uh, monkey. Macaca. Macaca. Man. Man is? Tell me, man. <laughs> man homo. Yes, homo. 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 Sapiens. Sapiens means wise. 
man means homo and sapiens means wise so the literal meaning is man who is wise man who is wise now we have only one species so no problem but in felis we have plenty of species depending on other species similarly we have plenty of species of monkey also the rhesus monkey the rhesus yeah, a word about this monkey rhesus monkey those who know it fine those who don't know it for them it is a type of monkey a type of monkey rhesus monkey is scientifically called macaca macaca mulatta mulatta macaca mulatta this is the rhesus monkey its rbc proteins are similar to the rbc proteins of most of the human beings rh factor the word that you might have heard about the blood grouping has been taken from rh which stand for rhesus macaca mulatta this is one species therefore i am not writing felis canis macaca because so many of them for example the indian holy cow boss boss indicus boss indicus this one is the indian holy cow why i am saying holy i am not here to spread any religion but to believe me holy means uh, the cow which is being said to be the native of india which one community believe to be the holy right so that is the boss indicus the name itself bear india indicus why don't we say india because latinization indica indicus latinization if anything you have to name after me you will not call it anurag you will call it anuragya that means this guy karl von linn he himself he himself change his name to binomial nomenclature binomial that means having the two names two names binomial two name system two name system he said that now from this day i am changing my name and my name is carolus carolus linius carolus linius he even changed the spelling karl von linn he named himself by after giving the system of naming as carolus linius but by birth the name was karl von linn i hope you understand that's why we have kept the word animalia animalia this is the five kingdom classification given by r h whitaker r h whitaker the five kingdom classification the five kingdom five kingdom classification classification given by this guy called r h whitaker now these names you have to learn these names you have to learn bachcho r h whitaker has given five kingdom classification according to r h whitaker all the living organisms can be divided into these five kingdoms starting from the prokaryote bacteria he called them as kingdom protista all will bear the name kingdom kingdom okay so the kingdom protista protista kingdom protista then the the fungi okay he calls simply them as kingdom kingdom fungi fungi kingdom fungi kingdom fungi hope you are also saying with me hope you are saying with me then he call kingdom 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 protista kingdom now what what these protista what these protista has what is present in these protista just give me just give me one one second and how it is different from monera my question is how it is different from monera just just one second one second
at the time of admission, nothing is being told. At the time of admission, everything is good, good, good. Just now we came to know that he is taking tablets of one of the students here. He is on tablets of epilepsy and uh, uh, his tablets for the last two days he has not taken. Therefore, if your ward is having any problem, please tell to the college management. There are a couple of doctors, at least you can tell them. Kingdom Protista, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Planty, Planty and Kingdom, Kingdom Animalia, Animalia. While doing this, he discovered one thing, that the single-celled uh, organisms found that some of them have a well-defined nucleus and some of them don't have the well-defined nucleus. These microorganisms are mostly associated with certain disease. Right? So he, he recognized that all single-celled all single celled cannot be kept under protista. So he removed some of them and he kept them inside. Can you tell me what is this one? <clears throat> tell me. What is this one? Kingdom Monera. Kingdom Monera. Which includes the prokaryotic organisms. The pro eukaryotes. You Karyotes. Keri, karyo, karyo means nucleus. Nucleus. U means true. True, well defined. Animal with a true or well defined nucleus. Prokaryotes, early, primitive, early. Animals with an early type of nucleus, prokaryotes. So these single celled organisms are kept under Monera, which are prokaryotes. All bacteria here, all bacteria, okay, uh, and uh, protist. Actually, there was a lot of mistakes earlier because earlier they used to consider a protista called uh, amoeba, paramecium, as animals, right? Like when we were young at your age, at that time, the amoeba, paramecium, they were taught under animalia, kingdom animalia. At that time, R.H. Whittaker classification came, but it was not creeping in so commonly in the textbooks. But when we started teaching at that time, we found that now everyone, every textbook is now using the five kingdom classification. So in Animalia, they are only keeping the multicellular forms, only keeping the multicellular forms. So these are the eukaryotes, single cell. These are the prokaryotes, the bacteria, kingdom fungi. Now these are the eukaryotes, eukaryotic, saprotrophic, saprotrophic, saprotrophic. Their mode of nutrition is from dead and decaying. Saprotrophic, eukaryotic, saprotrophic. Okay, these one are eukaryotic eukaryotic okay these are eukaryotic autotrophic autotrophic eukaryotic autotrophic and these are the eukaryotic eukaryotic heterotrophic hetero heterotrophic these terms we have to understand saprotrophic dead and decaying those who are nourishing or get the nourishment from dead and decaying, autotrophic, those who get the nourishment by self. They are making their own nourishment. They are making their own food and hetero. Hetero means other, other, those who get the nourishment, trophy, nourishment, those who get the nourishment from other body. And what is common to all three of them? All three of them, fungi, planti, animalia, all are multicellular forms. All three of them are multicellular. All three of them are multicellular. I hope you understand. Any confusion here? Any confusion anywhere? 
एनी कंफ्यूजन एनी वेयर क्लियर एवरी वन क्लियर एवरी वन क्लियर ओके सो दिस इज हाउ इन द क्रोनोलॉजी ही हैज गिवन द फाइव किंगडम क्लासिफिकेशन ही डिड नॉट गिव इट इन वन डे in on one day he has published his uh, book and uh, then no it is a evolution it is a evolution he also learned and he also see every every teacher while teaching the teacher learns the student learns that's it both are learning from each other and i am not saying only for the same purpose the learning is not necessary learning some new terms no learning can be of various type various in every class we evolve every class we have taken maybe more than 1000 or few thousand classes i have taken and every class has changed something in me although the change is so minute that it is not observable in after one class but certainly we are we are getting different day by day the day when gift classes started yesterday and today when the day ends today you have your database has changed you have evolved you cannot be the same you were three or four days back that is my point but so uh, i hope we are now uh, you know focusing on kingdom kingdom animalia i have given you the origin of this animalia as per the five kingdom classification and uh, animalia includes the all multicellular eukaryotic eukaryotic heterotrophs heterotrophs all multicellular eukaryotic heterotrophs that's it this is a basic common to all three of them my dear children kingdom animalia includes so many animals so many animals big small fearsome tame tameable so many animal isn't it and in one lifetime or in 100 lifetime it is not easy to know about them such a vast variety so what can be done there are two option either you leave everyone since we cannot do anything let's not do anything and another option is let us learn what all we can learn let us do what maximum we can learn and the second is always the second choice is always the good so when to know more about most of the animal it is always better to classify them in group and this classification in into groups that uh, you know those groups are called taxon taxa is the plural the plural of taxon is taxa what is taxa what is taxa groups the group we don't use this word group here we use the word taxon the group because this group is not simply grouping this grouping is on the basis of the grouping grouping is on the basis of on the basis of similarities yes bachcho similarities similarities and dissimilarities dissimilarities similarities and dissimilarities the grouping is not simply grouping this grouping is on the basis of some similarities and dissimilarities the groups are called taxon one taxon plural taxa taxon taxa and this science of doing this the organized way of doing dividing them into groups or taxa is known as taxonomy taxonomy <clears throat> this science is called taxonomy so taxonomy is the science of grouping the organisms in on the basis of similarities and dissimilarities now i'll just revise what all i have taught so far what all we have discussed so far very quickly we can revise all what we have discussed so far in today's class today's class we started with uh, the two terms proximal and distal proximal and distal and superficial and deep superficial deep proximal distal and superficial deep we also learn one term which is cranium cranium means the brain box 
right cranial cranial means referring to the head after that we have done uh, kingdom animalia and while doing no no this is not the second one uh, second one is different rh whitaker this one okay after that we have done on the board on the board we have done and i have asked you some questions and i was getting satisfactory answers satisfactorily you people have answered more than 99% correctness i could get the answers after that i started with the kingdom animalia but in between i have also done two more terms superficial deep then proximal distal and cranial caudal cranial caudal proximal distal superficial deep so these three pairs we have done after that animal kingdom animalia okay animal kingdom i said why we used to call it animalia in that regard i just tell you about carl von linn the guy who started the scientific uh, naming method and basically he said that you have to name every organisms in on the basis of two taxa one taxon is the genus and one taxon is the species so i know that these word will be i i'll be using the term taxon taxa okay therefore i have explained to you what is taxon means taxon is the group and it is not a simple grouping okay let's come and let's group them no it is the grouping on the basis of similarities and dissimilarities clear and this organized learning method this science of grouping into similarities and dissimilarities is known as taxonomy taxonomy right after that uh, <clears throat> i just discussed about the kingdom and i am calling them kingdom because a guy called r h whitaker has divided all the living organisms all the living organisms organisms first into four kingdoms but then he discussed and he also found that this kingdom comprise of two totally different type of organisms one having a clear cut defined nucleus and one without a defined nucleus so he separated all those without a defined nucleus and he classified them under kingdom monera so all the bacteria archi bacteria they are classified under monera and all the single cell organism for example amoeba paramecium euglena all are under the kingdom protista kingdom fungi fungus the eukaryotic multicellular eukaryotic saprotrophic kingdom plantae include multicellular eukaryotic autotrophic and kingdom animalia include multicellular uh, heterotrophic eukaryotic and heterotrophic then uh, after that this term today also terminology and tomorrow please remind me i have to tell you what are the different basis of classification i said dividing grouping on the basis of similarities and dissimilarities tomorrow you have to tell me what are the different basis okay bachcho okay fine okay bachcho tomorrow you have to remind me basis of classification basis of classification okay bachcho so today class understood today class all points understood all points clear understood i am trying to obtain that i am trying to obtain the qr code so tomorrow let's continue further okay bachcho <clears throat>